the goal here is to make this worm, worm gear set that is 3D printed. Here's the um, one half of it. This is in four pieces, so it'll fit on my print bed. But uh, that's 11, almost 11 inches. And the worm is a three start. This is a 30 to one reduction. And there's a, it's a, it's a very long, coarse pitch. The pitch is 1.638. About that and two inches in diameter I've already printed this and the problem is that this these faces are, are smooth enough that's fine but these faces um, because I printed it standing up like this and that there's really no other better way to print it but the the layer lines make it really abrasive so it just it, it grinds against the gear so I did some modifications to my lathe that I'm going to show you um, to be able to fix that. So here's my lathe. It's a Logan 9 inch lathe and you can see that the maximum thread pitch it can do is 4 TPI which is a quarter inch pitch. A quarter inch and I want to do 1.638 inches. So um, I'm asking this lathe to do about six and a half times the maximum pitch that it's capable of. So that's why I had to do some modifications. Some modifications start here with the gear train. Um, Normally what you would have here is a 24 tooth gear uh, for, for most of your pitches and uh, a 48 tooth gear here. And um, for this one row of, of thread pitches, you would take the 24 tooth off of here and put another 48 tooth so that it would be one to one. And then you have a 54 tooth gear that's just an idler between this guy and this guy. Um, but I did some math in Excel. I figured out if I take the 48 tooth and don't use either 24 or 48 here instead put the 54 tooth idler gear and run it down to here that's a 24 tooth that's supposed to be here and move it to here so that that uh, ratio is flipped the other way and this is now a compound gear it's usually just supposed to be an idler there but we're using this spot as a compound uh, gear spot so we got this big 3d printed gear here Go into a little one here, which is again another reversal of the normal um, reduction. Normally, um, the, the the gear train starts uh, low and then it goes higher. It takes several turns of the spindle to get one turn of the lead screw, but that's been turned on its head, and now uh, it takes several turns of the lead screw to get one turn of the spindle. And since that's the case. Um, it's now better to drive the lead screw instead of driving the spindle because that's how the gears are set up now The mechanical advantage is from here that way instead of from that from up there down to here So I'm driving it from here um, This doesn't line up with here anymore like it used to there's two holes here uh, I drilled another hole in the center so that I could slide this over leaving about a half an inch of the end of the, the lead screw sticking out and I drilled a hole through that and um, put a nut on there with a spring pin inside. And I can drive that with this drill. All right, so I got the uh, worm set up here in the pellet holder in the three jaw chuck. Uh, so six sides on this and three jaws. I can index this by two sides to hit the flank of every thread start. Right now I've got a die grinder in the tool post set at 20 degrees just to clean up this side of the tooth. And I've already done it here. I guess I'll go ahead and index it. But I'm gonna show you just uh, real quick how it looks. And look how much slop there is.
be pretty good. So I realized this is going to make my threads the wrong dimension because I didn't account for cutting anything off the, the um, faces of these uh, flanks when I 3D printed it. Uh, so this is this is pretty much just a proof of concept. What I intend to do is cut this whole thing out of aluminum. Uh, and I might do it the same way I'm doing this. I might go straight in and just make a, a zero degree slot all the way down and then make a 20 degree chamfer all the way down and then go 20 degrees the other way to form that, that tooth. But uh, I think what I want to do is make a 40 degree tool that'll cut that whole thing in one pass. Yeah, so that's a much smoother surface. So on that one, since I had the, the tool position already set from cutting the previous flank, um, I didn't have to do all that cutting and checking and cutting and checking. I just went straight in and uh, it automatically cut this one to the same depth as the uh, previous one. So now I have to reset my uh, die grinder position to be 20 degrees the other way. So this die grinder holder is just a boring bar holder. I made this collar with the, this is a piece of uh, linear guide bar, the same size as my boring bar. Just welded it on there. sure if I'll be able to get all the way in there. No. I'm going to have to figure something else out. Alright, so I found a way to get all this stuff tightened down in the correct position. Got this on center, straight in, 20 degrees this way. And I lock in the um, carriage. Oops. That looks okay.
I forgot to lock down my tail stuff at that time. All right, now I just need to get all this fuzz off of here, and I think we'll have a decent result. All right, so here's the final result. All the uh, all the stepped layer lines are removed from the well, not all of them. Most of the layer lines are gone from the surface of the thread flanks. Still some spots but what's left is not really proud of the surface that's a it's an innie and not an outie so this is much smoother now there's not all that grinding and catching there's a couple of little uh let's see that peeled off but for the most part it was an improvement and here's how i figured out the um gears needed to 3d print uh, I made a little spreadsheet that does all the math for um, the gears that I have in my quick change gearbox and the, the pitch of my lead screw um, and if you put all the normal numbers in there the thread chart that it gives you is exactly what is printed on the machine uh, so if I change this to 48 it shows me the uh, the line starting with four TPI, and uh, so what I did here was I just started playing with different numbers. So I put the twenty four back there, and then now if I swap these, I get let's see forty eight, twenty four. Just by swapping those two, I could get a two TPI, but that's still nowhere close. So at first I just kept increasing this number. Uh, Try if I put the 54 tooth there, still nowhere close. Um, let's increase the decimals here. So the pitch that we're looking for is 0 0.6105, uh, 0 0.6105 threads per inch. So I just keep increasing this, 80. 120 and I think I got the best number with 157 yeah so my my initial idea was to put 157 tooth gear on but that's way too big it won't fit uh, it won't fit with any of the rest of the gear train so that's when I started looking into ways to do a compound um, so let's see double spur here so I added this section right here for a big um, for for a compound gear, so it calculates a ratio in between. So 54 to 24 gives you a ratio of 0.44, and then 67 to 23 gives you a ratio of 0.34. And those two ratios together, going through the gearbox, gives you uh, 0.61028, which is only half a thou off. So that's what I did. And I just modeled those up in Fusion 360. 
I made these two gears. This one um, comes out a little bit to make room for the gear that's next to it. And then this one goes on to the uh, quick change gearbox.